In this video, you will learn how to take the various components of your bicycle wheel and put them together as a full assembly. Those components include the wheel, tire, sprocket, and locking ring. You will also learn how to make two different configurations of this assembly. One configuration will represent the rear wheel as shown here. The other will represent the front wheel assembly as shown here. From this point on, in order to avoid confusion, whenever I use the term wheel, I will always be referring to the wheel part that is contained within the assembly. If I use the term assembly, I'm always referring to the entire assembly of the wheel with the tire and the other parts. So if I say front assembly, I'm referring to the assembly, the front configuration. If I say rear assembly, I'm referring to the assembly, the rear configuration. And if I say front wheel, I'm referring to the wheel part, front configuration. And if I say rear wheel, I'm referring to the wheel again, but the rear configuration. I will demonstrate how all this is done with a fresh new assembly. As you know, assemblies have an environment similar to parts. They have a front plane, top plane, right plane, and an origin. We can use these planes and the origin to orient the components that we are going to assemble into this assembly. I'm going to start this assembly by inserting the largest and most obvious component first, which would be the wheel. So start with insert, component, existing part, we have several parts already open in session. One of them happens to be the wheel. I'll click on that and I'll just simply hit the green check mark. When I do this, it drops the wheel into the assembly environment in a fixed condition. You see the F next to the name. And it orients the origin of the wheel with the origin of the assembly and it also orients all the planes of the wheel with the planes of the assembly. You notice when I first dropped this component into the assembly, it was shown in a collapsed state in the feature tree. I'm going to open up the feature tree a little bit so you can also see that it tells me what configuration of this component was inserted into the assembly. In this case, the front wheel configuration was inserted into the assembly. This is the configuration we will start with. If for some reason your part shows rear wheel configuration, just right click on it, go to component properties, here you can change the configuration from rear wheel to front wheel, which is what we already have highlighted. Now this reminds me, before we go any further, I want to create two configurations, one which will represent the front assembly, the other the rear assembly. I'll go to the configurations tab. We already have the default configuration. I'm going to rename this to front assembly. I'm going to create a new configuration and name it rear assembly. The rear assembly is now activated. I want to go back to the front assembly so I'll double click on that. I'll return to my feature tree. As I mentioned, when a component is first inserted into the assembly, it's shown in a collapsed state. I can click on the plus mark here, which expands the part in the feature tree and actually allows me to see all the features that are contained within that component. This can become useful later on because we can see all the planes of that component, including any critical features we might want to use for mating parts to each other, such as this axis that runs through 
the center of the axle of our wheel. I'll collapse this for now. The next component we want to insert is going to be the tire. Instead of hitting the green check mark, I'm going to just drag it into the graphics window. We see one little problem is that the tire is oriented somewhat differently from the wheel. This can be a common problem in SolidWorks where sometimes you'll receive a component from a coworker or perhaps from a website that does not utilize the same orientation of planes as what you might be utilizing. So as a result, we see that the wheel and the tire are at right angles to each other. This is not a problem. The first thing we will do is make sure that the axis of the tire and the axis of the wheel are coaxial. I'm going to first manipulate the tire a little bit to get it close to the position I want, just for convenience. And I'll use this move component, actually rotate component command, which allows me to rotate the component in space. So that looks pretty good for now. What I want to do is make a central axis of this tire coaxial with the axis that was passing through the axle of the wheel. This is where being able to expand the contents of each component is convenient. I know that I have an axis contained in my wheel and I also know that I have a similar axis contained, which you see highlighted here, in the tire. I will make the two of these coincident with each other. I'll go to my mates. And here I can reopen my feature tree in the graphic area. I'll expand the wheel. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the feature tree. I'm going to click on the axis Actually, the tire axis is already highlighted. I'll show this again. I'll click on the axis of the wheel, close the wheel, open the tire, and click on the axis of the tire. And you see that the two are brought into alignment with each other. Click the green check mark. And I'll finish this mate and stop for a minute just to show what's going on. So here we have these two parts on a common axis but they are not aligned yet in this direction. In fact, I can grab the tire. And if I use the move command, I can move it side to side and I can rotate it, but those are the only axes of freedom that I have for positioning it at this point. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the center of the tire, when looked at in this view, is aligned with the center of the wheel. So this needs to be approximately in this location. I know that there's a plane running through the tire here and a center plane running through the wheel. I just need to make those two coincident. In the case of the tire, that plane happens to be the front plane. In the case of the wheel, it happens to be the right plane. I will make the right plane of the wheel and the front plane of the tire coincident. Right plane of the wheel. Front plane of the tire. They are now coincident. Now the tire is completely positioned on the wheel, but I can actually still spin the tire on the wheel. This isn't really too big a deal since we don't care too much where the tire is on the wheel. But if we do care about the wheel being oriented or the tire being oriented a certain way, we can put in one more mate that will prevent it from moving at all. What I would do is take the top plane of the tire and orient it with the top plane of the assembly and that will prevent any rotational movement. I'll go ahead and highlight the top plane of the tire while I'm here. Go to mates, top plane of the assembly. 
and that rotated the tire somewhat. Now we see that the tire is completely fixed in position and a minus sign that had previously been here has now disappeared indicating that the tire is completely fixed in space. This completes the front assembly.